Here are 12 books in two stacks of six which are going to help you make a meaningful difference in the world without having to choose between morality and money. Because believe it or not, it is entirely possible and in fact it is completely healthy to satisfy your personal needs while satisfying the needs of your clients in transformational space. Because I don't buy this idea that we need to somehow deprioritize our own financial security or our own feeling of self-esteem to be able to do a good job as a coach or a therapist, but we are going to need to look in two directions. You can't be lopsided in your focus. Helping is healing, but this is also your personal business and your career path, which is why these six books are focused on business, marketing and sales and financial philosophies. And these six books are about your actual coaching skills and your interpersonal ability. Full disclaimer, let me put these down for just 40 seconds. I am not a multi-millionaire guy who sells courses on how to help you sell courses, but I have grown my private practice from absolute zero to about $200 to $220 per hour in the last three years. I currently charge $6,600 for my inner work mentorships, which I currently feel is a fair exchange for four months of my life and my focus. And if you're interested in the whole structure of how I do things, then I've got a pinned comment in the comment section. But fundamentally, this video isn't about me. I'm personally tired of this myth that goes around in the coaching space, which I hear sometimes when I'm working with people who also want to do a bit of coaching, or maybe they're improving their coaching as part of the inner work journey, that we need to choose or sacrifice because we don't. You don't need to deprioritize your needs to be able to do an incredible job as a helper or a healer in the same way that you would never catch a plumber fixing your pipes for free or a copywriter who's going to shun the opportunity for a pay rise. It's time for helpers and healers and personal trainers and therapists and teachers to be rewarded for their expertise. So, where do we begin? Again, this is a bit of a different video on the channel. It's my response to the question that you're seeing on the screen where someone is transitioning to coaching and counseling from a different previous career path. I normally talk about trauma and self-development and self-actualization. This is for my fellow teachers and my fellow coaches. So you're very unlikely to be interested in this video for the next 15, 20 minutes if you're not one of those people. All that being said, Let's dive into the two stacks, and I'm going to focus on the stack which you don't think I'm going to focus on first, which is not the therapeutic stack itself, but the business stack. The reason you need to focus on business, and the reason I've split this in two with six and six, is that the primary sticking point of most coaches and most therapists is that they are not taught, nor have they sought out the information to make a sustainable business, especially when it comes to marketing and especially when it comes to sales because you take a therapist and then tell them they need to learn how to do sales through instagram or be able to market themselves on youtube or be able to structure a business on the back end that's not what they signed up for they want to help they want to be there psychologically for people who are in need and help them move through transformational threshold crossings but if you don't have the business in place you may find yourself in the unfortunate situation where you've done a master's or even a phd and you're going to get your first clients, and lo and behold, nobody knows who you are, nobody cares what you have to offer, and all of your wonderful skills behind closed doors will remain behind that closed door because no one has the opportunity to enter. So I'm going to rapidly go through these business books and then rapidly go through the therapeutic books because the main aim of this video is that you read the books yourself, not that I give you a three-sentence summary. Let's go into the business books. First book. Hook Point by Brendan Kane. This is a non-negotiable read for anybody who is using YouTube, Instagram, maybe TikTok. I doubt you're using TikTok. If you are using TikTok, you might not be the person for this video. I think TikTok probably isn't the best place for high-value coaching. But if you're using social media, you want to read a book like this because the reason that you're probably still watching this video and that you've watched my channel before is that I implemented the lessons from how to digitally market myself in a way where the attention isn't going to be dissipated in a boring way to, me, to make videos which are compelling. You can't get someone to listen to 
the actual core information in your video or in your essay or in your article if you don't know how to hook their attention. Hook Point by Brendan Kane, non-negotiable book. And these are in no particular order. I'm just bringing them up as we find. Next book, The Win Without Pitching Manifesto. I hope you can see that by Blair Enns. This little black book is one of the best books on how to sell yourself as a creative or a coach that I have encountered yet. It is such a wonderful book, which is split into these different tenets like this. Uh, we will diagnose before we prescribe. It's mainly talking towards creative agencies, but the reason the Blair is so worth listening to is that he ruthlessly cuts through limiting beliefs and common poor practices in regards to the client relationships before they've agreed to give you money for your service. It really gets through a lot of those sticking points that you may have found yourself in, where you're having lots of conversations that don't go somewhere, you maybe have a one and a half hour coffee chat or a discovery call, and then find out that they can't afford your rate, or you otherwise spend lots of time doing things which do not support either your financial security or actually encouraging somebody to get into the therapeutic space that you're providing. Win Without Pitching Manifesto, fantastic read, highly recommended. Company of One, I don't know the author's name, let me d double check. Paul Jarvis, Company of One. This book is the reason that I am trying not to grow too fast on YouTube or Instagram. If you've watched my channel before, I'm at the stage as this video has been uploaded where I've got over 100 videos in this channel that I could clip up and put on my Instagram and grow it very rapidly with a consistent content strategy. But reading this book gave me a very good lesson very early on that you do not want to grow beyond a capacity which you can actually maintain. I have some friends who have reached rapid success on Instagram very quickly through a reel or a video that kicked off. Others have done the same on YouTube. And what that actually looks like, despite your fantasy of that being a good thing, is way too many comments and way too many DMs all at once. And all of those opportunities slip through your fingers. And it's the same with scaling too quickly. You might be at the stage in your therapeutic business where you think about hiring an assistant or hiring a content editor or hiring someone else that can help you to expand out your endeavor but you might not have the actual energetic availability to maintain those relationships as an employer without detracting from your primary service towards your one-to-one -one clients or maybe your group clients. This book is going to teach you some principles, which I can't go into in this video, but they are very important ones which will encourage you to stay a little bit smaller for a little bit longer so that you can build something robust and sustainable in your practice. Book number four by Daniel Priestley key person of influence. This book does what it says on the cover. If you read this, you will figure out how to position yourself. It's primarily a book on positioning, but it's also about marketing and branding in a way where you are the expert and you stand out from the crowd. The reason I think I'm doing relatively well on YouTube is because I pay attention to the small details, like actually bringing forward my personality in regards to the library that I work in, I say live in, but I guess I do live in this technically, I spend a lot of time here. But the library that I'm in and having a sense of aesthetics and reinvesting the money that I make through my coaching practice into this camera and this new laptop that I got at the end of last year, it's over $10,000 spent on gear, continually reinvesting back into this free content, not because it's necessarily going to translate into a financial reward, but because my feeling of wanting to serve across the world, this very certain type of person that's interested in the very certain types of videos that I make on this channel, it requires an attention to detail, and a quen uh, an attention to appearances, and attention to how people receive information in a way which you might not consider as a primarily skill-based helper. I wouldn't have thought that it would be important to put this much energy and money into gear, which you don't need to do at the start, you can film with an iPhone, but it is important if you want to stand out from the crowd. You have to have something which has a bit of a pop. The way that my videos feel is very intimate because I'm not editing. It's me and you having a conversation in real time with all those pauses in between. 
and I'm kind of close to the camera and I have this beautiful environment that feels warm and hopefully welcoming and I share books that are interesting and I don't ask anything from you. This is the first video in a hundred videos where I've explicitly made something about coaching and therapeutic support, which is part of what I do if someone's interested, if they want to work with me one-to-one. -one. But, you know, I'm just trying to give free content here because I'm trying to be a key person of influence based on actual competency. Highly recommended book. Fifth book, Million Dollar Consulting by Alan Weiss. Can you guess what this one's about? If you can't, then... Um, I'm not sure what to say to you because it is about building a private consulting practice. It's a little bit dated and it's leaning more towards corporate work, but you want to expand your um, directions of education into many different sectors and niches to get a fully rounded out idea of what it means to be viable as a business. Alan Weiss, I think one of the takeaways from this book that I found really useful is particularly in regards to charging more what it means for you to command a premium price point and differentiate yourself from the competition. For therapists, for example, I think it's a fucking awful idea to get yourself on an app where you are basically lost in a sea of other therapists and coaches and you'll be charged about $40 or $50 per hour for very low investment clients who aren't making long-term commitments to you. The reason that I have a four-month minimum commitment for my coaching and the reason I charge a pretty good rate is that I want to specifically attract a very narrow group of people. And if you make yourself too available or you charge too low a rate, you will attract people who do not value the quality of the service you actually could bring forwards, which not only upsets you in regards to your self-esteem and your feeling of being a professional who has something valuable to offer, you actually won't give too much of a great service to them either. You won't feel motivated. Whereas I feel very motivated in every two hour session that I deliver for any of my clients. I'm currently maxed out with seven clients because I know that they are paying me a very fair rate and I will be as sharp as I can be in that session and bring forwards as much as I can between the sessions through messenger contact to be available for them and available in a complex variety of ways, which comes from knowing how to set up a consulting business. That's all I'll say about that one. Final book on the business stack. Interestingly length video. I think will be a long one here. Another book by Daniel Priestley. We have got oversubscribed. Reading this book is the reason, I believe among other reasons, but this book in particular is the reason why last year, not to brag or just genuinely help you as like a, a therapist or a coach trying to build your practice, I received just over 300 requests for one-to-one -one work. And I worked with about 2% of those people. I think I worked with 18 people last year in 2022 of 300. Maybe the mathematics isn't right, but I was oversubscribed at a massive ratio because in 2022, I was capped. I thought I'd be capped at 15 clients maximum per year, the whole year with five at once. And then gradually as I expanded, I'm now at seven as my max and I'll work with up to 20 this year. It's the principle of being oversubscribed because the other books will not feel applicable or tangible in their actual application to your professional development unless you have that feeling that you are a rare commodity and people know that working with you is a genuinely rare opportunity because it is, because you're a particular type of talented therapist or a really good personal trainer who specialized in a certain direction. You will become oversubscribed, but you also have to not dilute yourself with giving your time and your energy to everyone who wants it. I absolutely wish, as someone who's in this mainly for the transformation, of course, again, you have your selfish needs. I like learning and I like being able to speak and articulate and I have personal vested interest in this career path. And you'd hope that everyone who's on their own career path would have that feeling of internal development. But primarily, I want to try and give as much as way for free as I possibly can. But in giving things away for free and not making an ask for any payment other than, hey, go and read this book or go and do this practice and let me know what you think. People naturally trust you quite a lot. And it means that people are more willing to give you money for a higher level of service because you've earned that trust over many months. But it requires you showing up for free for a very long time and providing very high value. And then 
hopefully you will become oversubscribed. That's the end of the business stack. While that simmers in, I'm going to take a sip of water and then we're going to get into the therapeutic development. And this is what I mean about the editing. There's dead time in between here because I'm going to change the vibe into the therapist space. Second stack. This is for interpersonal skills, actual coaching abilities, and the kinds of books I want you to read to go from pretty good coach to a very good coach or a very good healer, whatever language you want to use. First book is a book on teaching, and it will also help you. Hopefully it comes up. Yeah, just about. Parker Palmer, The Courage to Teach. Should have actually shown you the front page of this because I've got a nice signed copy uh, for someone. Anne. I'm not Anne, but Anne got a second-hand copy of this book, and I guess she loved it so much that she donated it to a charity shop, and now I have it. But the point that I want you to read this book is that this is a very soulful book from one teacher to another teacher. And if you're saying to me, Jordan, I'm a coach, I'm a personal trainer, I'm a therapist, I'm not a teacher, you are a teacher. And learning about the principles of pedagogy or educational um, structuring, how people learn, is an absolute essential. But you also need to have the identity to actually be the teacher. From a Jungian perspective, you need to draw upon the archetype of being a good teacher, being a scholar, being an educator, having that academic capacity to genuinely inspire your students or your clients to read books. It's something which really operates at the core of my identity in regards to what I'm doing in this career, because if I hadn't have done this through YouTube, I would probably be a lecturer at university. No surprise with the place that I spend my most time in that that is what I would do, but I didn't go down that path because it's much more interesting for me and it's just better. But become a teacher and be a very good teacher and this book will help you to actually have the internal identity shift to really claim that and be someone who speaks up for something that you believe in. Book number eight. Wonderful therapy book, The Reality Game by John Rowan. John Rowan is a leading humanistic uh, psychologist, a counsellor, who's written many books. I've read four of his books. This is the best one. I want everyone to read this, even if you're not explicitly a therapist, because it talks about interpersonal relating at a very high level. It shows you the essence of humanistic healing exchange, i.e. between the therapist and the client, how to deal with transference and countertransference, how to deal with projections, how to deal with ruptures in the relationship, and how to build a safe and loving and productive container that will really serve your clients at the next level. I've reread three of John Rowan's books, and as in I've read four and then reread three of them. He is a fantastic teacher. Highly recommend you pick this one up, even if you're not a therapist. And now we've got a fun read. This is for anyone who's a fan of shadow work, which in a nutshell is the ability to understand, investigate, and potentially draw back unconscious energies which are lingering in your shadow territory. It can be very positive and it can be very negative. It's not just demons, it can also be angels. But we're going to turn to Robert Moore and facing the dragon, confronting spiritual grandiosity and all of the archetypal missteps that come with having power. This book is another non-negotiable read. Facing the Dragon by Robert Moore, one of the best Jungian psychologists. He co-authored uh, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover with Douglas Gillette, I think. Yeah, Douglas Gillette and Robert Moore wrote KWML. He's addressing so many of the very difficult, and I mean very difficult, very behind-the-scenes moments when grandiosity and therapeutic narcissism and coaching inflations can really eat up the potential healing energy of any one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationship. For example, the situation where because you are maybe increasing your rates and you're getting some success on YouTube or Instagram or your books are being read by more people or you're having public television appearances, whatever it might be, you might pedestalize yourself in a way where you then consistently ignore the own, your own cracks and your own foundations. And that will lead to a shadow moment or a rupture in the relationship where, God forbid, You've seen stories like this before. Someone who's on the grandiose high horse may go do a group workshop with a group of impressionable people, and that man or that woman might act out in sexual ways where it's completely inappropriate. 
was very much a sad trend in the 1960s, which is little spoken about in the era of free love where the, you know, therapeutic guy or girl would go off and lead this incredible cathartic group and then pick out the most attractive one or two people and sleep with them on the weekend and then go and cycle that round the earth for however long that shadow consumed them. I don't recommend you do it if you're trying to build a genuine reputation and have a genuine impact on the world, and this book will help you avoid some of those pitfalls. Next book, Power in the Helping Professions. Will I take a sip of water? I held this book up recently, and it's by this man whose name I cannot say on YouTube, but he is an excellent teacher, continuing from the book uh, Facing the Dragon, which I just held up. These two go wonderfully together, because we're talking about all of the shadows and all of the corruptions that go with being someone who has disproportionate power from your client. I don't think it's a very good idea, although it's a trendy idea to make it like, I'm not in a position of power and you're not in a position of lesser power because that is confusing for someone who's paying for you to be a professional. It's like you going to a doctor and imagine if you sat down at the doctor's office and uh, she said, well, I don't know, what do you feel? And you're like, my arm's broken. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, what What do you feel? Like, let's work this out together. You go to a professional to get professional support and professional guidance and professional insight. You don't need to go all the way into the grandiose pedestalization, but you need to know how to work with power imbalances, even if it's the power imbalance of someone paying you money for your time and energy, and you both have different ideas of what that means, or you have different ideas of what it means to have higher or lower status. Or maybe someone hasn't had too many experiences with a therapist or a coach or a trainer and they don't know how to navigate that very uncertain space. You want to read a book like this to help you hopefully smooth out those road bumps and avoid the ruptures which could hopefully be avoided. It's a very good book for people to read. Final two books. Another book on teaching. This is a bit of a wild card book for anyone who's interested in transpersonal psychology, which in a nutshell is holistic psychology based on self-actualization, which includes an element of spirituality. We've got The Living Classroom, hold it up properly, by Christopher Back. And this book is absolutely wonderful. It's one of my favorite books in my library because it talks about how to work with collective fields of consciousness as an educator. And you don't need to connect A to B to realize what I'm doing with this YouTube channel is basically using YouTube as my place where I get a lecture theater or an amphitheater, more symbolically speaking, to be able to create, hopefully, deep, meaningful, resonant impact and a feeling of connecting with somebody at a level which is unusually deep for a free YouTube video. It's because I'm taking the principles, principles that I learned in the living classroom by a leading transpersonal psychologist who spent 20, 30 years, I think 20 or 30 years by the time that he wrote this book, teaching in lecture theatres and looking at morphic fields and collective consciousness and different things relating to syllabus and student development and how he'd have these moments where he's in the lecture and he'd go, hmm, let me think of an example about uh, religious teaching. And he'd say, let's imagine that your mother died last week and you're working through a certain addiction that names the certain addiction. And you also have this situation with your boyfriend and then names the boyfriend situation. And a really elaborate story is what Christopher would bring, th bring through to illustrate the point. Multiple times over, someone would enter from the lecture theater, at the very end, they kind of sneak up and say, Chris, you, you just described my, my whole situation. You, my mom died last week and I've got this trouble with, um, you get the point. It's very moving. I almost get goosebumps saying it because I've had experiences myself where I'll bring through spontaneous examples while filming this, and I'll have five to ten people message me sometimes if it's a particularly good video, and they'll say, you just put, you just like pl plucked out and picked out everything that I was going through. Like, this was a timely video, this came at the perfect moment, and certain elements were exactly on the mark. Kind of interesting to think how it could be entirely individual, and yet five or ten people experience that, and those are just the people that message me. This is a book that will really expand your idea of what it means to be a teacher at the highest level. But we have one final book, and this book is truly the most important book of them all. It's this brand book. And this brand book is a placeholder for your depth of understanding in your particular profession. This one book 
represents the dozens if not hundreds of books, the hundreds of hours and all of the internal work that you need to put in as a therapist to actually be good at what you're doing. We can talk about $200 per hour coaching and we can talk about scaling your business, but if you're a scam artist or if you genuinely haven't gone to the depths that you're trying to take someone else to, if you haven't put in your hours to read the subject back to front and know who the leading figures are, know who the contemporary icons are and just put in the work to be bloody excellent at what you do, discard the rest of the books because you will, you will be essentially building on sand. You haven't got something reliable under your feet. This book represents at least 50 books, potentially 100 books as a minimum, to be a genuine coach who's done their own work and is continually pushing with their own curiosity to make sure that they're ethically and morally aligned with guiding people through difficult spaces, which is increasingly important if you're going to do trauma work or any kind of sensitive spiritual work or even working with people who've got things like eating disorders or chronic weight issues or whatever it might be, you better bloody know what you're doing and you better be willing to put in the hours even while your therapeutic practice is taking off to keep reinforcing your learning. Yesterday I broke my book ban, which I haven't ordered any new books in the last six months, and I ordered another 77 books and spent something like about $1,500 buying books I really probably don't need to read, but I'm always looking for that next edge. Going to be releasing a course next year. I'm looking for that, that final 10% just to make it the best I could possibly make it. And that's the life that you're signing up for if you want this to be your career. I'll leave it here. I hope this video has helped. If you're interested in working with me one-to-one -one on some of these issues, it's not exclusively what I focus on. It is part of my mentorships if you're that kind of person, but I'm not opening those mentorships up until end of March time. But pin comment if you want to learn more about how I structure my boundaries and my expectations and just who I am as a person and why bother listening to me. But don't bother listening to me if you just read these books for yourself. This is the best that I could try and bring together in just 12 books. I hope it has been nourishing for you and I will see you on the next video, which conveniently enough is right over here. I'll see you there.